Experiments, because that's what science is. Experiments answer questions and test hypotheses. They turn ideas into theories, into laws. An experiment is a bit like a function machine in maths. If you put a 2 into this function machine, the function machine always times it by 3, and so you get 6 out. If I replace that, if I put 3 in, that's going to times it by 3, I'm going to get 9 out. The experiment is just like that. What we put in determines what we get out, and the experiment always does the same thing. So, we've got an idea. We want to know which food is the most energy, and we're going to test a few different foods. Firstly, I'm going to put in crisps. I'm going to burn the crisps, burn one gram of it, measure the temperature rise. The thing I get out is 23 degrees temperature change. Now I'll burn some bread. Put in some bread. The experiment is going to burn one gram of it and measure the temperature rise. The value I get out will be different depending on what I put in. We call that, what we put in, the independent variable. And the, the number we get out, the variable we get out, is the dependent variable. The experiment has to do exactly the same thing to the independent variable every single time. So in the middle there, in the experiment, keeping it exactly the same every time is the control variables. Well, what's next? Well, we need to write a method. It needs to be simple, as simple as possible. Step by step, preferably, so that anybody could follow it and anyone could check what you've done. And a diagram, nice and simple. This time, all I've got is a clamp stand, a clamp, and a boiling tube with water and some tongs with some food that I'm going to burn. But the devil is in the details. You've got to tell people you're going to use 20 centimetre cubes of water and one gram of food. Otherwise, they won't be able to control the experiment in the same way you did. Now, this is the most important bit. The risk assessment. The risk assessment identifies what the hazards are, what the risk is, and how we can control it. So, one example of a hazard in this one would be using a Bunsen burner. The risk is that you could be burned. The control measure is, well, use it on the safety flame. Use a heatproof mat under it. And if you do get a burn, wash that burn underneath the cold tap for at least five minutes. Then, collect your results. We usually use a results table with the independent variable on the left, the dependent variable on the right. You change this, you measure this. It's that simple. Then, plot yourself a graph, which is a graphical way to represent your data, to demonstrate. And you'll need to know the different types of graph. The most usual ones will be a bar chart. Or a line graph. And the bar chart is when it's a categoric variable versus a continuous variable. A categoric independent variable, continuous dependent variable. Line is when you're comparing two sets of numbers, so two sets of continuous data. And we can get a continuous trend. Lastly, write yourself a conclusion. Were your ideas correct? Then evaluate your work. Was your experiment reliable, accurate, precise and valid? What's the value of your experiment? Evaluate. Lastly, it's going to go through a process of peer review. Do other people get the same results? And then you can do some further work. You can develop your ideas so that hopefully you go back into the cycle, do more work, more experiments to turn your ideas into theories, into laws.